everyone. Welcome back to the Ask the Vet video series. I'm Smart Packer Sarah, and this is Dr. Lydia Gray, Staff Veterinarian and Medical Director here at Smart Pack. And we are here to ask and answer horse health questions submitted and voted on by you guys. If you want to see the questions that we've already answered, we're going to answer five today, but we've answered five times Thousand. 13, oh. 14, so many. A lot. Uh, so we have a whole backlog of questions. We have a playlist on YouTube that you can check that out. And uh, they're broken out into each individual one, so you don't have to watch the whole episode. Yeah. You can just get the Although, answer to the question you're looking for. They're pretty good. If you it don't should. watch the whole episode, you might miss out on the time that we talked about vampires and there's mm -hmm. all kinds of good things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we had a we had an idea for a movie. Sweaty bats. Remember Ooh, that one? Sweaty bats. Sweaty bats. Good times. Yeah. Yes, the bats you're <laughs> thinking of. Our first question was asked by Louise on YouTube and she is wondering what is the best age to geld a stallion? Is it better to do before starting them under saddle? This is so interesting because I was at my mother-in-law's house and we had a question about the different Where are sexes you going of with horses. This? Okay. We had stallions and geldings and mares because she just got a rescue dog and okay. they apparently did his neuter the way that you neuter a cat, not the way that you usually neuter a dog, which okay. is different, which I didn't know. Anyway. Like, was there a question? <laughs> no, just okay. talking a lot so, about gelding. Getting back to the gelding question. So I have a funny story. Yes. When I was in practice, I had a request from a client to geld a really, really, really young horse. A full. young? Full. And I had never been asked that before, and they didn't teach me that in vet school, so I called up a local practitioner who was more experienced, been around, and I, I told him what was going on. He said, well, I'll... Or, or are all four legs out? And I said, out of what? And he said, the uterus. And I went, well, yeah. So that's so there's apparently this is the no answer. age too young. Yeah. The the how there's a lot of um, uh, misconceptions about it. Like I, you know, I go online, I Google, and I read people people think, and there's a lot of people that think. Oh, I have to wait till my colt drops mm -hmm. before he's gelded. Wow, the, here's the fact, science, science wins. The testicles of the horse drop between 30 days before birth and 10 days after birth. So that's why, hence the question. Yeah, and then the ring that allows them that they drop through closes. Inguinal ring? Yeah, yeah. I know. Ding, ding, ding. Uh -oh. around. <gasps> Thank you. That's later. The inguinal ring closes, and then so they're either they're dropped or they're not dropped. Okay. So you do not have to wait mm -hmm. for that to happen. Now, if they're not dropped, or maybe one's not dropped, then the horse has cryptorchidism, which is a separate deal, and you can't castrate in the field. The horse has to be taken to a, a surgical facility. But um, that misconception, we can just sort of throw out the window um, today. They, horses, so, so horses reach sexual maturity or puberty at um, 18 to 20, 24 months. So most people want to, if they know they're not keeping the horses as telling, they want to geld before then. I would say a year. Six to 12 months is kind of like what most vets will do because it's, it's actually a lot easier the younger they are mm -hmm. because the horse is not as big, right? Um, there's less bleeding, all the tissues are smaller, they get up from the anesthesia better, they just, they heal better, mm -hmm. there's less trauma. One of the things I hated, hated to do in practice was someone would bring me a, a 10, 15, 20 year old stallion, breeding stallion even, and say, we're done, we want to castrate him. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, this is gonna be a nasty surgery. So um, there's lots of reasons to castrate them early. One is, tell me if you know this, if you castrate a male horse before they reach sexual maturity, they will be taller. Really? I'm going to go with no. You didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, because testosterone delays or, or it actually enhances the closing of the growth plates. So if you get that hormone out of the system, the growth plates close it when they naturally should. So, you know, when you see stallions, it might be 16 hands, 16 two, and then a gelding out of that same stallion is 17 hands, 17 mm -hmm. two. So, Interesting, yeah. I had no idea. So that's one consideration, is how tall do you want the horse? How masculine do you want the horse to look? Some don't like to geld young because they want to see performance. 
So that was going to be my yeah. other question was, is it, because the tallness you would kind of think is the opposite, um, but that was interesting. And so I wondered, are there things like the way that stallions present themselves and that they have just like, do they always have nicer manes or is that just my impression? <laughs> I like, think that's probably the, the crustiness of their neck yeah. that makes their mane look so. Um, as far as presence, there is definitely a stallion presence, yet there are many geldings that are pretty sure they're hot stuff. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that you need, that's not for me one reason to keep a horse a stallion because there are lots of uh, cons to keeping a stallion. You, you can't, you're not going to be able to turn out in a group, especially a group of females. Um, lots of barns prohibit you from being there. Like mm -hmm. we don't want stallions. Sure. You can't, a junior can't show a stallion in many disciplines. Um, there's, there's just a lot of reasons to not having a stallion and unless the horse has um, superior breeding lines or really good way of going then or you know you want to keep him as Italian I would geld and I would geld young get, just get it done. Cody thinks he's hot stuff he's gelding See? but I think he might think he's a very hot mare. Oh well there is that yeah. <laughs> All right, our second question also submitted by Louise oh. on YouTube. Same Louise, One of great the same, job. Same horse. Ooh, I have a young horse, perhaps, <laughs> that had a locked stifle. It happened twice so far, and when she was two years old, oh, not the same horse, okay. when she was two years old and the second time was about a year after that. Why does it happen? Is there a treatment for it? And is it a long-term problem? Okay, so um, when a, a, let's talk about the stifle first. The stifle is the joint in the horse's back leg that is between the, the femur, the long bone from the hip, mm -hmm. and the tibia. So it's like our knee, mm -hmm. and it does have a patella. Um, in the horse, it's the reason they have this unique locking mechanism. There's a, a ridge coming from the femur that there's three, three ligaments, three patellar ligaments, and they hook over that ridge, and that's what allows them to sleep standing up because they can lock their hind legs into position. The problem is because of uh, conformation, like an excessively straight leg, sometimes some, um, a hoof defect, um, just a horse is not fit or conditioned. The, the quadricep muscles aren't as, as bulky as they need to be. Um, trauma, debilitation, the, the unhooking part of the equation doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And they'll like it stuck locked. Now if they try to go with a stuck hitched leg, it, it is in a, kept in the extended position. Mm. The um, toe drags the ankle, the top of the ankle rubs in the ground or like the knuckles. Uh, and they, they can't go very well. And so it does seem to happen more often in the young horse and some of them grow out of it, just as they get more strength and development and body condition and, and, and proper movement. But if it doesn't, um, you want to talk to your, your um, farrier and your veterinarian. There may be corrective shoeing involved. Mm. There are specific, there's physical therapy for strengthening the stifle. There's very specific exercises that can help horses build up the, the hind end and especially the area around the stifle so that those ligaments work properly. If those don't work and it's becoming a fairly serious problem, um, there are some injections, hormone injections that, that can be given that, that change the um, uh, density of the ligaments. You can inject a counter irritant right into the ligament and, and, and change the density of the ligament that way. And last resort would be a desmotomy, which is a splitting of mm. the ligament. So don't like to do that unless you have to. It's fairly aggressive and there's complications with that. But if, if the horse, you've done everything else, you tried everything else and it's not working, that may be your only option. So on the, is it a long-term problem, kind of it depends? Depends. And it you sounds only like a young to... horse still, so we don't know yeah. yet, but um, there are things that she can do now and hopefully improve it. All right, well, good luck. Our next question was submitted by Amy Campy on Instagram, and Amy is wondering, is there any benefit to joint supplements given in feed? Ooh. Scandalous answer question. <laughs> I have been told they are helpful, but also that horses do not metabolize them when given this way, and injections are better. Is this true? 
Great question. I'm really glad we get to talk about this. <laughs> I am too. I actually found two, now I can show you this, two pages of research. Um, there's tons and tons, but I These I are just, just the names of the studies, and it's two pages worth. Yeah. This isn't like the research. No, 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 no. <laughs> These are just the citations themselves. And it's, it's got to do from everything, your, your main um, ingredients, your glucosamine, chondroitin sulfate, HA, MSM the um, bioavailability, because I think that was one part of her question, as well as the efficacy, and, and some of them the safety. And so one of them, here's this one, the effect of MSM on biomarkers of oxidative stress in sport horses following jumping exercise. It doesn't get much more specific than that. So these, these guys um, conducted a great experiment and showed that a very, very common joint supplement was not only um, taken in orally, got to the tissues it needed to get to, but it had a positive effect. So there's one here from a very well-known surgeon, uh, Larry Bramlage. He gave oral HA to young thoroughbreds that had OCD, like chip removal surgeries, mm -hmm. and found that the, the treatment group that got the HA had less swelling and pain than the group that didn't. So we're not supposed to say those words, but that's what the research says. I mean, it's hard to talk about the research when that's what it says, so. But there's, here's uh, bioavailability pharmacokinetics of, of uh, glucosamine and chondroitin sulfate. I mean, there's tons and tons of research out there. I pulled these from Astavet blocks. Mm. So there's probably a half a dozen entries in Those are written by a pretty smart that, lady. You know? Well, I had done the work already. <laughs> so I knew I knew these studies were up there already. So if you want to find them, we can probably put a link in on the video this video, description. Yep. But that's where the link is gonna take you to the Astavet blogs because they're just they're all there. And so the important words that you heard at the beginning were bioavailability, so can your horse absorb it, and then efficacy doesn't mm -hmm. work. And, and safety. There's some, yeah. there's some safety studies in here too, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But hopefully you guys know what that one means. <laughs> um, and so it's nice to see that there's research on all of those things, proving mm -hmm. and reinforcing it. I do want to talk just for a minute this if I This one could. I like. Sure. Yeah, go for it. Well, this is the one that Martha Rogers did that said, consistent use of an oral glucosamine chondroitin supplement, this was in a, a barn of hunter jumpers, reduced the need for hock joint injections. So they were able to spread the injections out farther and get more uh, performance out of the horses spending less money, yeah. basically. So it, it shows the combination of oral supplements for joints with other methods. Yeah, so, so not that they approach, work better, they work differently. They work together, and they're complementary. There you go, yeah. Just like us. <laughs> I like to think so. Um, I did want to talk about one thing you said yes. in terms of um, that we can't talk about it or that we're not supposed to talk mm -hmm. about it. Um, and this is something that I think we don't uh, talk a lot about. Because we're not supposed to. Because we're not supposed to. <laughs> but there's differences between supplements and pharmaceuticals, like drugs, right. that go through like rigorous testing. Yep. And so that's why we're not allowed to say things that are disease or condition terms, mm -hmm. like arthritis or inflammation, because those can only be treated by drugs. But supplements can help support normal function. So if those things are a concern for you, it might be wise to be supporting your horse with a supplement. But those are hard connections for us to make. And so that's why we avoid those words. And yeah. that's why you don't see Smart Pack ever saying, here's arthritis, there are companies out there that say it yeah. about supplements, and they shouldn't. Right. Um, and so kind of a rule of thumb I think about when looking at supplements is if it sounds too good to be true, it, it might is. be. Yeah. And so that's uh, you can read all about NASC guidelines on our website. We'll include a link to that. That's the National okay. Animal, Supplement, Animal Supplement Council. And they help us uh, regulate the industry so that you guys uh, can feel confident when you're shopping for supplements mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. you know that you're buying from a trustworthy vendor. Yeah, because there's a seal on it. Yeah. yeah. That was that was very well said. So I Thank think, you. Yeah. I was I could tell you were a little bit nervous. Ah, we were, no, we're getting into complete it. Complete confidence. <laughs> complete confidence. It's true. I mean, we can always edit it out. If it went horribly <laughs> right, you guys wouldn't even know. Right. <laughs> All right. Fourth question submitted by Alicia on the Ask the Vet forum. Alicia, look at you. 
smartpack.com slash ask the vet questions has a handy little form that you can drop your question right into and it goes straight to the team who condenses and consolidates and puts them up for voting and so that's a great thing to use and Alicia said my horse recently got her SI injected Ooh, man joint injections on joint questions I love it and I was just wondering if there was anything I could do to help her be more comfortable especially after hard work or jumping could I poultice liniment the area it's a tough spot to get to or is there something else I could do thanks so I went right to the source. You know, we had Dr. Canips here Ooh. recently, and he is board cert. He's double board certified. He's a really smart guy, and he's an American College of Veterinary Surgeons and the new American College Veterinary Sports Medicine and Rehab. He's got all the letters. I know that's it's a the lot alphabet of letters. Soup. A C V S M R. So I sent him that question in the hopes that it was going to rise to the top, and it did. And this is what he said. So SI is sacroiliac region, mm -hmm. lies deep to the croup, like you said, and relies on the muscles of the top line and croup for stability. SI injections reduce inflammation around the joints. Poultices and liniments applied to the area would have very little effect. Mm. Further support of this area depends on building strength and flexibility in the support muscles. Top line muscle strength is improved with carrot stretches and belly pinches. I think that's the cup where you yeah. And, and oh, and have them tuck. Yep. Yeah. Uh, upper rear limb and croup muscle strength is improved with work over ground poles, cavalettis, and cycles of gait transitions like walk, trot, walk, trot, canter, trot. Building strength of the support muscles of the back and croup is the best way to ensure long-term comfort in the SI area. And I ask him, one of my favorite books is called Activate Your Horse's Core, Unmounted Exercise for Dynamic uh, Mobility, Strength, and Balance by Dr. Hillary Clayton and Narelle Stubbs. And he said he uses that a lot too, and he highly recommends it. So You guys should have a book club. <laughs> so that's his answer. I think it's right on, and you've, there you've got a resource to go read up on. I really like imagining with all of his many, many credentials, him taking out his prescription pad, belly pinches. Two times daily, <laughs> call me in the morning. You know, knowing him, he might do exactly that. Belly pinches is an amazing, <laughs> amazing term. Last but not least, question number five. We're flying through them. <laughs> Ashley, also on the Ask the Vet forum, alphabetically too, I like it. Clicker training for horses has been growing in popularity, you little trendsetter. What are the pros and cons of it? Is it a more humane way to train horses? Clicker training. I thought no one was ever going to ask, and so I have a prop here. It's my clicker. And I used it earlier on Sarah. Um, I appreciate it. <laughs> the important thing is to know that the clicker is not a cue. I think people are confused about that. So there's a, three names that pop into my head when I think about clicker training. It's been around for horses since the mid '90s, and it was uh, Shauna Karish was the first one that I knew about. She actually got her start with marine mammals. Oh, and then uh, Alexandra Kurland is one, and then the last one is Karen Pryor. So those are all good names. If you're going to try this, you need training yourself or a resource, because one of the the cons I found is that if the human is not clear in their own head what they're doing, then the animal is not going to be clear either. Mm -hmm. The thing about this is, it's it's a tool for positive reinforcement, when there's a pro that's very attractive to people, um, we're finding more and more that negative reinforcement is not the best way to train animals or husbands. It's positive reinforcement. Do you want to take a minute and explain the difference not between horses and husbands, but between positive well, and negative reinforcement? Like the clicker is positive reinforcement because it's when the animal does something, a desired behavior, you click and then the click is timed immediately with the desired behavior. That's why this tool is so important. Now I can fumble and fish around and get the treat because with this sound, which is a very distinctive sound, it can be any sound. But this, they've never heard before, so it's easy to associate this with, that was the right thing, now let me find where did I put my treat. Mm -hmm. you know? So you can not take your time, but you don't have to be as quick with the actual giving of the treat 
if you've used the signal to indicate that was right. So positive reinforcement is recognizing the right behavior. Negative reinforcement is correcting the wrong behavior. Exactly. And, and so, so we're yep. leaning towards positive. Yeah, behaviorists now say, you know, animals learn better, quicker, and retain more when you use positive reinforcement. So it makes sense because that is what's right. All you know with negative reinforcement is this is not the right thing. Don't do that. Something don't else do that, is don't right. Do and the horse has to keep, there's a question been asked, and they have to keep seeking out answers. Maybe the answer is this. Yeah, yeah. nope, no, it wasn't that. And maybe it's this, nope, wasn't that. But with this tool, when I ask the question and they give an answer, and I go, yep, that was the answer. And so click and treat has been the term that's been used, and I use click and prune because with Newman. Um, so the nice thing about this, so mm -hmm. here's another... She feeds him prunes. She doesn't prune him with pruning <laughs> shears. He does not find Although that rewarding, I Although I use this I for um, main pulling. I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also to get him to drink water. Oh. Yeah. So, the, so that, and that's two examples of, here's back on the pro list, clicker training can be used to teach a good habit or skill or behavior or discourage or remove a bad habit. So if you've got a horse who... Um, kicks or bites or doesn't trailer load or moves away from the mounting block, all things we would consider negative, you can click or train. On the other hand, if you want a horse to do some positive behavior like drink water, you can also click or train. So it doesn't have to be either a good behavior or not a good behavior. It can be anything. The, the sky's the limit. And cons are, I think people think that, oh, Clicker training causes horses to mug you for trees. Quite the opposite, in fact. You do can, your horses not do that already? <laughs> you can clicker train horses to not mug you for trees. Oh. Because you can teach them, if I don't give you a cue to come wherever my treats are in my pocket, then you don't because you're not going to get rewarded until this thing makes a noise. So with a horse that was really uh, pushy about that, Shauna tells a story where she went to the farm and you have to associate the click with the treat and then they begin to seek out what do you want so that you push the button and I get a reward. And every time he looked and went away from her, she clicked, gave him a treat. So he was like, oh, the farther I stand away from you, the better it is for me. And he got that in less than five minutes. Wow. So in less than five minutes, she removed the mugging for treats problem. That's fantastic. She's like, next problem. On the other uh, cons, you mentioned an interesting thing before we started filming, which was you clicked it out in the office, and at Smart Pack we have uh, like 50 dogs, 60 <laughs> dogs that come to work yeah, every day. And she saw some gopher heads pop up. And, what? What? Yeah. And so is there ever a problem if you're using it in the barn, if other horses in the barn are clicker trained? Like, do you try to be not near where those horses are? Do you try to do it more as like a solo activity? Have you encountered that at all? Does I anybody else at your barn do it? I not encountered it, only because there's so few people around me that I know that are clicker training. Um, when I did it at the rescue that I worked at, I would take the horse to a specific location for the training. Mm -hmm. And it was partly to get away from other horses, but it was partly for, for them to associate. Yeah, yeah, this is an area of learning. Mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah. All right. But I love it. Fantastic. Well, that was all that we had. Thank you guys so much for submitting the questions. If you want to submit a question for a future video and potentially win a Smart Pack gift card if your video gets voted into the top, or your question gets voted into the top five, you can submit those questions on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter at blog.smartpack.com. You can email them to customer care at smartpack.com. Mm -hmm. Smartpack.com slash ask the vet questions is a great place to submit them right on that handy form. And if you're posting them out on social media, don't forget to use hashtag ask the vet video so we can keep track of all the yeah. great questions. Um, otherwise, you could get an answer from someone who has no ability to help <laughs> you, but probably strong opinions on clicker training. Correct. Who knows? Correct. So you can vote, and uh, the voting will be on YouTube, Twitter, and the blog. And the voting is how we pick the questions for the next video. So that's a really important step. Even if you have a great question, if it doesn't get voted for, we won't be able to answer yeah. it. So keep an eye out for the voting. And of course, subscribe to our channel so you know when the voting's happening. Mm -hmm. We do a video about that as well. 
And if your question was answered in this or a previous video and you want to claim your SmartPak gift card, just email customercare at smartpak.com or hit us up on our YouTube direct messages and we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks as always for watching, for asking the vet, and have a great ride.